let's get into this the carnivore diet for beginners In my experience using a carnivore diet for inflammation and creating it to be a ketotic high fat lower to mid protein strategy over just high protein is amazing literally if you can get into ketosis while doing the carnivore diet and you have any type of inflammatory issue then this is a great strategy for that now if you have a thyroid problem or adrenal insufficiencies, or low testosterone, or estrogen dominance, you gotta be very careful how you implement a carnivore diet. So let's break it down. Let's go into how much protein, what types of protein, the timing of your protein, and of course, all things about fat. Fat facts. The first step that you wanna do on a carnivore diet is just eliminate all the starch and all the plants. Three to four weeks, just get rid of all of them because if you're dealing with inflammation and you don't know what is activating a histamine response or any type of inflammation or joint pain, just clean slate, clear out all of the plants. The meats that you want are going to be ruminant animals, cows, sheep, goats, well, pastured pigs. Chickens, I'm not a big fan of chickens unless you're eating the eggs or eating the organs. I would not eat fish for the first month because if you're having any type of inflammatory disorder or histamine intolerance, fish, they collect a lot of bacteria. And a lot of you people out there are reacting to fish and don't know it. Seafood, basically. And of course, seafood is so polluted. Let's go for your grass-fed and if you don't have money for it, then start saving. Because I'm not compromising on the quality of food if you are dealing with severe inflammation or histamine. Your cuts of meat should be incredibly fatty. A lot of people are eating ribeyes, but of course ribeyes are very, very expensive. So I would do ground beef, 80-20 ground beef if you can't afford a grass-fed ribeye and you can find more grass-fed ground meat or minced meat in most stores if you're reacting to it it's because you don't know where it's coming from it just says grass-fed on the package you don't know if it's dry hung or wet hung meaning if it's wet hung it was hung for less days that means less bacteria growing and of course dry hung is for like three weeks and three weeks hung is bacteria, bacteria, bacteria. And for those trying to do a carnivore diet, dealing with inflammation, may want to cut out anything that is adding extra bacteria to their plate. You also have prime rib, short rib, and brisket. But again, pricey. Ground beef. If you don't react to it. If you can afford the fattier cuts of grass-fed meat, then go for the ribeye. But don't just eat ribeyes. Different foods, different cuts of meat have different nutritional breakdown properties to them. So just eating ribeyes is going to not provide you some of the minerals that you might need or even the vitamins that you might need. For example, vitamin C, you're going to get much more vitamin C in liver the beef liver, or for example, zinc and copper, or iron. It is very important that if you're doing a carnivore diet that you must eat the organ meats. This is very, very important because a lot of you are nutritionally deficient. If you have a thyroid problem, which so many people do, you need vitamin D, Okay, but you also need vitamin C. Vitamin C is going to help the thyroid hormone get into the cells to be used. So just doing a ribeye 
may not do you well. Pork. People keep thinking that pigs are high in omega-6, which is very acidic, but that's the quality of the pig. Don't buy your pork at Costco. I forget the name of the chemical they feed the pigs to get more fat, but it's really, really not good. Let's just put it that way because we're on YouTube. But certain types of pigs like heritage pigs are very high in omega-6. So you might want to look around for the different types of farms that provide hopefully cows and pigs as your source of red meat, lamb, goat, venison, deer, elk, amazing, wild boar. Now coming from California, I never spoke in this way, but so many people give me deer because of, you know, I'm in the country and that's what people do. And I have a ton of deer on my property. Look for these foods. Take some extra time and find these farms or go to the farmer's market. There, You can also have your grass-fed, pastured animal products sent to you. A lot of these farms now who've got their own processing now are shipping their goods. So dig deeper than Sam's Club or Costco. It is in my opinion, things like sardines and salmon should wait. You should wait with these types of seafoods after the first four weeks of just cleaning out everything. Just the cleanest quality of food. Now things like thymus, hard to get, especially grass fed, but when you get it, it is amazing. It's got diamine oxidase in it, which is an antihistamine. But if you can't get thymus, look for kidney. Kidneys are amazing. Now, and do not try to get your nutrients from supplementation, meaning like ancestral supplements or desiccated organ meat. The nutrient profile has degraded exponentially as it's been shipped over and oxidizing in those capsules. Try to get real food that is, has not been processed. Now, chicken. If you can get pastured chicken, bring it. But most people are not getting pastured. They might get free range, but even those chickens, I still, I, I think they're still eating corn and soy. Pastured pigs, or pastured chickens rather, hello, blah, blah, blah. they're just eating what's off the ground and a few supplements that they get. Um, the red meat, high in nutrition when you're doing carnivore. After the first four weeks, you can start introducing things like salmon, sardines, shellfish if you're having issues with your thyroid and you need iodine. But in the very beginning, I think you should just clean out all of these different types of meats and bacon and aged meats, bacon and sausage, clean it out. Whole foods, whole cuts of meat, high quality, put it in your freezer, don't let it sit out it's always best to go to a butcher and have it be frozen already, less bacteria. You also, if you have histamine intolerance, you want to cook your food, freeze it, then take out the portion the night before, let it unthaw, and in the morning cook it. That's how you deal with severe histamine. And if your histamine is so bad, I'm gonna do a whole video about this, boil it so you can cook all the bacteria off all the way around that cut of meat. Let's talk about the fat. You can do butter, ghee, lard, tallow, lamb fat. Chicken fat is an omega-6, so that's a hard no. I mean, you can do it sometimes for flavor, duck fat, chicken fat, goose fat, but that's not what you're gonna have on the daily. And again, when it comes to fish fat, it's not enough. Rendered fat is gonna get your fat pro profile up. Like you wanna start off with at least 12 tablespoons of rendered fat a day. If your gallbladder is functioning properly, I don't count the avocado because people are doing avocado vor. I don't count avocados as a fat to get into ketosis, not on carnivore, nor on keto or avivore. It is very, very important that you eat your fat throughout the day. That means no fasting because once you cut out those carbs 
and your glycogen storages have been depleted, your body is trying to keto adapt. Now you can make ketones and not use them. And using a glucometer, I did a video last time, a few days ago, about how to register and analyze the numbers, how your lifestyle is connected to why your blood sugar is high if you're not eating any carbs. But if you're dealing with like diabetes and things of this nature, I don't necessarily think you need to go carnivore. I think that carnivore is great for people who have inflammatory disorders. Yeah, because it's very difficult to get the potassium requirement that you need to balance your electrolytes in the absence of carbohydrates. This is the reason why I don't really like carnivore for the long term. And a lot of people do, not, and even the gurus do not recognize when they're having chronic dehydration or a lowering of their diamine oxidase. They don't recognize it because people put too much emphasis on the scale as your health barometer and that's not how it works. Now, some people are like, I've never felt so much, so I've never felt so good that I do on carnivore. And I'm like, just give it time. It takes a while for the body to start really having a difficult time to absorb and balance and keep in the blood your electrolytes. I recommend the 12 tablespoons of fat, which would put you around 167 grams of fat. And then you would just get the rest of the fat from the meat and the fatty cuts of meat that you're eating to ensure that you're over 200. If you have a gallbladder problem or no gallbladder and you're having issues with high fat, yeah. There are some supplemental aids like tutka or tutka, tomato, tomato, ox bile salts, lipase, which is a fat digestive enzyme because it's not only just having issues with bile salts. Sometimes it's people having difficulties with the production of lipase, that fat digestive enzyme or stomach acid. Sometimes people will do a... HCL, betaine HCL, which is a supplement that helps increase the caloric acids in your stomach to help break down the protein and the fat like on a ribeye or with ground beef. I really, really, really suggest that you test and make sure that you can eat rendered fat just by straight eating it. Just don't mix it with anything else. Don't put it in a broth. Just eat it. Eat like three or four tablespoons for a couple of days. And if you have greasy stool, shoulder, shoulder blade pain, neck pain back here, right side pain, middle of the stomach pain, pain that radiates to the back and you think it's your kidneys. And you could have a gallbladder issue, sludge, stones. Even if you do a test, they can't always see. Hello, they can't always see. So Look at, look at your symptomology, like greasy stool, pale stool, feeling bloated on fat or the aversion to eat more. If you do, you can, for the short term, do fat trimmings. You know, the fat, the white fat around a ribeye that has not been rendered and dripped and then put it in a, on a grill or in an air fryer and blast it. Unfortunately, that is not pure fat. That's going to be a lot of protein because it's tissue. It's tissue and fat. What's pure fat is what drips to the bottom of the pan. But again, some people have a problem with long chain triglycerides. So get the gallbladder worked out before you start adding all that rendered fat. But for the short term, to not freak out your body, you can do fat trimmings, 167 grams of it. That's in weight and total, even though it's mixed with protein. When it comes to your protein amounts, this is very important. Less is more. And how you grow and gain muscle is through your insulin regulation. You don't actually need a lot of protein to build muscle. You need to deal with your insulin, blood sugar. This is very important and critical. You need to deal with the dysglycemia or stable glycemic index. For those who don't know how to measure their protein, if you don't have a scale, use your hand. It's a very subjective way, but it gives you a sort of an idea of how much protein you're taking in. You take your hand. This is about four ounces. This is going into the territory of five and six ounces. 
depending on how big your hand is, you can get up to about six ounces on an entire hand with about the thickness of the base of the hand. Be careful. You don't actually need, again, as much protein as you thought or what's being promoted. Go get an insulin test. Go get an A1C, HbA1c, and then know your fasted blood sugar that is fasted or or also two hours after a meal. It can be a lunch or it can be a dinner to see where your body, where how your body is breaking down the protein. Is your blood glucose spiking? Is it normalizing or is it dropping dramatically while eating protein? Men, you need to be under a hundred grams of protein. I don't care if you lift. If you're not six foot seven, you need to be. The average height for a man is five ten. The average height for a woman is five foot four. So I'm going by that. Most people, most men are actually around five seven to five ten. People who are uh, taller, like five eleven or six feet to six five. That is less common. So I'm going to go towards the standard person, standard height. For men, it's going to be between 65 and 90. If you're lifting and you have a hardcore lifting schedule, you can go as high as 95. Keep it under 100. Spread throughout the day. I cannot talk when I'm trying to rush. Then we have... um, and, and who is going to eat less protein and who's going to eat more is dependent on your kidney function, chronic dehydration. If you have high iron, what your uric acid levels are, that's going to define it. If you have enough stomach acid, if you need protease, for example, women, your protein should be under 70 grams per day. This is not weight. This is the total count of protein. So it's going to be between 50 and 70 grams of protein a day, not per meal, a day in total protein if you're a woman. So you split that up, that can be three to four ounces. With men, it can be four to six ounces. Well, it depends on your height, four to six or four to five and a half. When I do my consultations, it's very easy to figure out who needs more protein and who needs less protein. Because some people, they eat protein and their blood sugar spikes. Or they have issues with iron. Or if you don't absorb B12 very well, then we're going to look at how much protein. If you have kidney issues, if your GFR is low, how your kidneys filtrate, you're not going to eat a bunch of protein because people don't think about that stuff. They're just going like, oh, I need it to build muscle or you're getting older. You need more protein. I'm 56. I don't need more protein. I need to balance my hormones. I need to have a good, strong gut wall because if your gut wall is weak, you're not absorbing the minerals and the vitamins and the amino acids that you're going to get from protein. So people are trying to do more and more and more to hit those nutritional goals or necessities or, or requirements for your cells to function. It's simple, but it's complicated. Don't just pound down the protein because that protein that is not utilized will be converted back into glucose. And if you have lazy fat cells, if you have blood sugar dysregulation, if your insulin is too low or too high, you're going to store that as fat. Remember, carnivore is not a weight loss, weight loss diet. Now things, if you want to try to get a matrix, it's not technically fiber. There's no cellulose, but if you want to try to eat tendons, eggshells, the fish bone, eggshells, crushed, pulverized, tendons, chicken feet, which has collagen as well, chicken feet, oxtail. You can do these types, uh, chicken bones, crushed and pulverized for the short term, not for the calcium, but for a matrix to have fiber. Now it's a sort of a pre- work as a prebiotic fiber to stabilize your gut microbiome. That's a whole nother video. I've done this. I've spoken about this before, and I hope this helps for those who start. Get a glucometer. Any type of stress can spike your blood sugar and make it very difficult to get into ketosis. And if you're not using a carnivore diet to get into ketosis, you're wasting your time. You're not going to make it up to three months without having issues over here, like chronic fatigue, diarrhea, loose stool, constipation, 
tired like crazy on carnivore. And a lot of people go through this and you got a few people who don't, and then they become the status quo for the rest of you who are having problems. And you're like, why am I having problems? Because these people are anomalous that or people are lying straight up. I'm going to call it the way it is. Now, this puppy's in my lap, like chill girl, chill. If you guys want to learn more, go to stephanieperson.com. I'm going to put all this information in my 30 day challenge. My house is going to be built within a couple of weeks, which is why I have pushed the launch of the 30 day challenge to March to get me past all of this stuff so I can provide you guys with the best information possible that you can actually utilize for years down the line. Now, time for me to get to work and edit this video and I'm out. Comment below if you're struggling, if you're a newbie to carnivore and how to make yourself, not how, but if you are getting into ketosis or if you need help with getting into ketosis, I obviously do consultations, coaching. I have a membership course page where I cover all three diets because a lot of you who are forcing carnivore can't do it. Your uric acid levels are too high. Your kidney function is too low. Your stomach acid is too low and you're suffering. Don't force something that's not fitting because it's trending. Be very, very careful. There are three options, low carb, high fat, keto omnivore with plants to get the potassium in because carnivore does not provide enough of your electrolyte minerals. And anyone who says that it does run, force run with the cross and some garlic because they don't know what you're talking about. And I'm out 56, soon to be 57. And it's a process. Go check out my old videos where I look distressed, dehydrated, inflamed and how to age backwards and keep your energy without being on TRT or HRTs because that's not what you, or thyroid medication. Ooh, that's a whole video. What a freaking that whole world is such a scam. Y'all people need to work on, you need to go down that rabbit's hole and find the initial problem and then fill it. Don't go towards that, that route of all those supplements and medication. And I'm out. Peace. Energy.